Hi. In this video, we're going to be looking at phishing attacks and spam emails and what we can do to protect ourselves. So in this video, we're going to be looking at some types of phishing attacks, one of them being the spear phishing, credential harvesting, what it is and how they work, what to watch out for and how to protect yourself. So what is phishing exactly? Well, phishing is a targeted email or other form of electronic communication that will be sent to either an individual or an organization that would appear to be trustworthy. But within this email, there is malicious intentions such as stealing data, stealing money, or to even infect the computer that has been targeted with malware and viruses. So how does this work? Well, let's just say, for example, a user within an organization gets an email from what they think is a legitimate source and they think it's a trustworthy email. Usually this email is some form of offer or reward or maybe even to view a document, in which case you would have to log into either one of those things into a secure portal. The user then places in their credentials and then clicks log in. None the wiser, but then eventually Either nothing will happen because it will show either a blank page or it will take you to another web page that is not what you expected to see. So for, so, for instance, if you wanted to enter your credentials to access a document and you clicked log in and it didn't take you to that document, that would be something that was unexpected. But once those credentials have been entered and you click on log in, the malicious attacks can begin almost instantly. And a variety of these attacks can start off with sending out emails in a mass mail shot style where all the contacts within this user's address book are then emailed. Documents can also be intercepted and doctored. So, for example, if you've got an invoice that's got some bank details on there, the PDF or the document itself can then be doctored to have different bank details, which would then cause the customer or the paying person to pay money into the different account. Or if the computer is infected with malware or viruses, this would gain this would allow a hacker to gain entry onto the network and start scouring around the network for other files to steal, whether it's local or cloud storage. And from the here onwards, because there may have been a possibility of a mass mail shot taking place, the cycle could then begin again, where another victim could then possibly fall for this attack. So how do we stop this? What do we need to look out for? So if we take a look at this email that we're presenting here, it looks fairly legit. It looks OK. It looks like I can claim I can claim money for working from home. So I need to set up some form of payment. But let's have a closer look. Let's have a look further into this one. And one of the first things that we need to look for is the subject header. It says that I can claim to work from home. I need to set up a payment. Now we all know obviously with the global pandemic that's been going on for the past couple of years, there's been quite a few amount of people that have been working from home. And of course the UK government has also said that we are entitled to some form of, of rebate for working from home. So it's quite a luring subject header. But one thing also that we need to be aware of is that there is a spelling mistake in this subject header. And it's very, very rare to find a subject header that's got a spelling mistake. But let's look further into this email. What else can we find? Well, there's the email address. Is this an email address that we recognize? Well, we can see that this email has come from HR, as it says HR employee benefits. I'm quite sure that most organizations, if not all, do have a human resources department that deal with employee benefits and employee payments. But the email address that you need to look out for usually, if you do have a HR department or if you have an external HR company that, that assists with your company, it would be something like hr at company.com, not staff all at myhr-portal.site. It would be very rare to see an email address that ends in dot site. And plus, this seems to be an email address that is not recognizable. What else can we find in this email? 
Well, we've been, we've been advised by this yellow banner that this message has actually originated from outside the HPP group. So I know already that this email is from somebody that I don't know. It's from outside of the HPP group. So therefore, I need to be a little bit more cautious and read a little bit more carefully into this email. So, the email is asking me to set up a payment to work from home to claim expenses, and it's saying that I am entitled to $1,500. But the problem here is that I work in the UK, so why would I want American currency? But again, it's a luring incentive, and it's also a link for us to click into to try and get this payment set up. And one other thing that we need to look out for is the grammar. Now, if you look very, very carefully where it's got acknowledgement form, you can see there's a space after form and then a full stop. And then on the second sentence, it says, please look at the and then the colon. Now, if there's a website that it's asking me to go to, there would be no need to put the colon there. And the space above form shouldn't actually be there. So along with this poor grammar and the bad spelling mistake in the subject title, and along with the 1,500 1, United States dollars currency incentive that it's trying to get me to get, I would certainly say that this is a phishing attempt of an email. Because what it'll ask me to do, once I click on any of these links, it'll ask me to log on, it'll ask me to pop in my email address and, and password, and from there onwards, the attacker will have access to my information They'll have access to my emails, my storage, my files, and could again possibly gain access to my computer to then scour the network for further damage. So how do we protect ourselves from these? Well, there's a few variants that we can, that we can go through. And the first one being is multi-factor authentication. Now, unfortunately in the cyber world, we can't stop anything from happening like that. Hackers will always be sort of one step ahead. They'll always try something new and we have to try and keep on top of it as best we can. But let's just say, for example, that you did accidentally fall for this attack and you did end up using your um, username and password and the attackers got that. And by placing in multi-factor authentication, you have the ability of that secondary level authentication where you can choose to accept or deny any login requests. So in a typical scenario, if you're away from your computer and you suddenly get a prompt to say that you're being logged into somewhere, you have the ability to stop that and you can report it to either us or to your line manager or to someone who could possibly deal with your IT section. Don't open any attachments because they contain malicious code, which then gives the hackers the ability to log into your PC. You can also mark the sender as junk or spam so that they won't try and contact you again and your email client will automatically know what to do with that email. If you have access to an iPhone, you can hold the links down that it's asking you to go to and the links will actually be verified and they'll, be, they'll come out as clear text and you'll be able to see exactly where that link goes. Because if we look further back into the previous slide, Another thing that you can do is change your password regularly. So in the off chance again that you may have gone into a phishing attempt and you've entered your password, you can change it. And there's a very quick keyboard shortcut that you can do if you've got a setup where you can press Control Alt and Delete and click change your password. And that will then assist you in changing your local PC password. And you can also do this on Microsoft Portal as well, where you can log into your emails and you can click change your password or reset password. Read the emails very, very carefully as well. Check out for grammar mistakes. Check out for spelling mistakes. And if you're unsure, if you're, very, if you're still not sure at the end of this, you can also call the sender or call the company from which it thinks the email is being sent from. But call the number from either your own phone and go to Google and Google the company's telephone number so you can call them directly. So you call in a legitimate telephone number. There could be the off chance where the attacker has placed in another telephone number for you to call just in case of this event. And what you'll be actually doing is calling the, the attacker's telephone number, not the company's.
So use Google to pull up the company's official telephone number and just ask them, did you send this email? If they say yeah, then it seems to be okay. If you say no, that also gives the organization that you're calling a chance to sort themselves out because they may be under attack also. And referring to Google as well, use Google to verify the email address that you've got. So if it looks like it's a, a dodgy email address and you're not sure, Google it, see what comes up. Google the company name that's, uh, that's trying to email you. So after this video, we seem to have learned that the phishing email is a malicious way of obtaining some data. What we can do to look out for sending email addresses, what, what the links may look like, what uh, incentives may be involved and to check out for bad grammar. And what you can do to protect yourself, which would be to enforce multi-factor authentication, to verify the links, obviously not to open up any attachments and call the organization and check. If there's anything obviously that you get stuck with in throughout this video, if there's anything that you'd like to discuss, if there's any queries or if you've got any queries on suspicious emails that you may have, do not hesitate to get in touch with us and we'll certainly check it out for you and we'll let you know if it's safe to proceed or not. Thank you very much for your time.